because your, your brain is using another cues, especially when the R, the ITD start failing or start becoming zero, uh, you start using other cues. Um, quite often, they're all three cues are used together, but the other third cue is called spectral cues. And as I hinted at before, that has to do with the shape of your head and the shape of your pinna. So if I make a sound from here, uh, the, what, the, the sound waves as they enter your canal would have interacted differently with your pinna than if I did do it from here. And the waves just uh, get a different shadowing of your head and especially the pinna. Especially at high frequencies, the pinna becomes very important because the wavelength of the sound becomes similar uh, in size to the size of your ear. And these ridges start making a, uh, an, an impact, on, they start influencing the cont the, uh, the spectral or the tonal content, spectral is the same thing as tonal, the, the tonal content of the sound as it enters your ear canal, depending where, it's, where the sound is coming from. So depending on the sound location, the frequency content of the sound entering your ear canal is different. And your brain uses that coloration change to say, oh, it must be coming from you because it's used to it. So if I change your pinna with Michael's pinna, <laughs> it would take a while for your brain to relearn and you might get hit by a truck until then <laughs> because you'll be looking at the other side of the street and so it, you'll be surprised yeah. how, how important the pin are uh, to locate sound especially high frequency, high frequency uh, content sound um, and this is why the pinna is not perfectly symmetric see mm -hmm. nobody has a perfect round ear and that's why it has these ridges um, they are uh, uh, the ridges cause diffraction of the sound so when the sound goes around ridges and remixes again the waves they, they have different content because of uh, hmm. inter constructive, destructive interference. When waves move uh, in space and they remix, they have different content. So by the time they enter your ear, it depends where the sound is coming from and also depends on the shape of your ear. Hmm. This is why, and because your shape of your ear are, are different than his ears, we have to worry about the HRTF. And also the size of the ear is hmm. different, so the interval level difference and time difference will be also different and the shape of the head will also influence how much shadowing. So all of that, but the bottom line, your brain is using these three kinds of cues to locate sound. <laughs> and if you use a dummy head, or better, if you use your head, you are capturing all these three cues. And all of the job is to, is to play them back at the entrance of your ear canal, and that's it. Your brain should get all the cues. Well, it turns out that there are a few problems. Uh, first, how are you gonna play them back right at the ear canal? most intuitive way would be using earphones or headphones. And that has some caveats in it. What are the caveats? First, um, the, um, if you play um, with headphones, sound that was recorded with uh, uh, microphones in your ears, you have to worry first about the frequency response of the headphones and uh, how they interact, the headphones, how they interact with the pinna. There are ways to calibrate that. It's involved, but we can do it. Any lab can do it. And there are products now that can do it also. That the back DSP, and I'll show that to you. Uh, you can calibrate for that, so you can pick that out. But still, there's a big problem. So suppose I, I record binaurally, play it back through headphones, and I rotate my head. What happens to the image? It moves with you. And when I put your microphones, the musicians will move with you. First, they'll be very close to your head, um, and um, if you're not using binaural, but if you're using binaural, that can be far, far from your head. We can talk about that. But uh, generally, when you move, when you move, they move with you. Now your brain knows that's not what happens in reality, because your brain knows if you go to a concert hall and you rotate your head, music musicians refuse to stand up and move <laughs> with you. They just sit there. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is fix that image in space. But it's impossible to do because it was recorded already on the dummy head, and you don't know what the HRTF will be uh, interacting as you move because the sound is all recorded with that HRTF of, of the dummy head. So, so that's the big, one of the biggest problems is that uh, now whenever there's a problem like this, your brain collapses the 3D illusion uh, and will find where the transducers are <laughs> to protect you, okay? Because it's always trying to find the source of sound. This is our, our main intu uh, intuition main reflex is to find the source of sound, to protect you from that proverbial bear in the forest. So whenever there's anything wrong in the whole chain, microphones are not perfectly symmetric or the, uh, or the, there is some kind of mismatch or some, or some spectral response of the uh, uh, dummy head mismatches yours, 
which is often the case, or the um, uh, you're not doing you're not fixing the image spatially, or the fact frequency response of the headphones is not perfectly subtracted, your brain will collapse the 3D, which will put the sound right close to your, to your head. Mm. Depending on the on that uh, failure, it can be very close or in the worst case when you play without any binaural information, any HRTF information, the sound will be right at your ear and the mono sound will be right at the center of your head. This is why when you play 99%, 99.9% of songs from your iTunes, in your, it doesn't matter what headphones you buy, whether it's AudioQuest, which I think is superb, or Focal, my sponsor, which are incredible, the sound will be right here, very close to your head. Mono sound will be in the center of your head. Because there's no cues to put mm. the sound out, outside. Um, now, I will show a technology that we developed called Back HP, which was patented only six months ago, that can put that for 100% of the time. Now, as I said, binaural audio will give you that uh, perception, but it's not perfect, and it's only for 30% of people. So you have to do something more than binaural audio, to binaural audio, to make it work for 100% of people, which I'll explain to you later, which we can do. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a demo right now, and you'll see how it works. Um, but generally speaking, binaural audio will work for people whose mismatch from the dummy is that big and who have a tolerance for, and we cannot predict, some people can tolerate head rotation with binaural audio before they collapse the image. Some people like me cannot tolerate anything and I can never be fool myself with binaural, unless if it's done with my own head, and I've, I'm, unless if I'm doing head tracking. Okay. So uh, to get binaural audio to work through headphones, you have to do very good, uh, use very good microphones, use your own HRTF, use a uh, uh, head tracking and uh, also equ equalize the <laughs> headphones, okay? all of the above. Now, these were only things you could do in the lab, but now there are products that can do that um, easily. I will show you uh, this next thing. Awesome.